Hey guys, what is up? It is Bibzu7 here again, and welcome to my 1000% plus Enrage Telos Guide. This video isn't going to be as crazy as my original Ultimate Telos Guide, since I'm going to assume that you know all the basic mechanics of the fight, and that you're generally aware of, you know, like all the terms and stuff. That being said, though, I'll still go over a bunch of scenarios and things that won't always happen, but definitely could, and you definitely need to know how to deal with. I'll mainly be focusing on things, though, that you will need to do differently than below 1000% in Rage. So if you're a beginner or you're not confident in your knowledge of the whole fight, then check out my full guide in the description. Before we jump into the gear and inventory that you're going to want, uh, I just want to give a quick little disclaimer here at the beginning. Pushing 1k plus in Rage at Telos will pretty much change like your entire outlook on RuneScape or, or PVM. At least it did for me. Before I went for Silver Warden, I was a big time revolution advocate. I used it everywhere. Telos, Raids, Solok, Rax. I never really had any problems using it, and I certainly tried to continue using it here at 1k plus in Rage Telos. <coughs> but I'll tell you this right now if you aren't using full manual on P5 at 1k plus, you're going to have a really bad time. You need to be able to use time and switch your auto attacks appropriately and you can't have basics just firing off when you're trying to catch a freeze or deal damage to the minions while they're on the font and you're trying to use barrages and stuff. I started using full manual for only P5, switching at the end of P4 uh, from revolution to P5 and I still used revolution for the first four phases uh, just because I was so used to it but after a little while I just started using full manual for the whole time. Um, and after doing that for not too long really, I learned to 4TAA and I have been using that since. So I went from a big time revolution advocate to a 4 ticker in less than a month uh, due to pushing in rage at Telos. So you definitely don't need to 4 tick for this, uh, it certainly helps, but you absolutely need full manual for P5. And in my opinion, it's a lot easier to go from using full manual to four ticking than it is to go from using revolution to using full manual. So once you're already on the full manual sort of, you know, mindset, you might find that it's a bit easier to learn how to four tick from there than you might have thought. But 100% you need manual for phase five at least. And, um, you know, if that's something you feel like you can't do, then... I'm sorry, but I don't think pushing in rage is going to work out well for you. You can try, you certainly can try, but it's just my opinion that you pretty much need to be on full manual for that. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the gear and inventory that you're going to want to be using. Pushing above 1k in rage at Telos is pretty much the hardest PVM challenge out there if you aren't including like the small team or duo challenges that people try for various bosses. Uh, as such, you pretty much need the best gear out there. So essentially, I do not recommend pushing above 1k in rage without Acto Primeval. You can technically probably do it okay with Tectonic or Elite Tectonic, but even then there would probably come a point where it's basically impossible. Um, I mean, you could prove me wrong, sure, but it's just really not worth it. The higher block chance will save you food, and the defensive resets are massively helpful, especially on multi-font phase fives. So if you ever plan on going for high Telos and Rage, get on those raids, start doing them every two days until you get that full Acto, and make sure you get those rerolls ASAP, because they are hugely helpful in getting you more drops. Uh, you only want the helm, body, legs, and boots, since that still gives you the set effect, and there are much better uses for your glove slot than the Acto gloves. Cinder Banes will still be your best bet for damage output early on, but once you get up to about 1300 to 1400% in rage, you want to swap it out for a Death Touch bracelet, since the reflected damage at that point will actually start to outreach the damage Cinders do, which is because Telos will obviously be dealing more damage to you at that point. Other than that, wear your Max or Comp Cape if you have it. If not, go for a Talkar Call Mej. Uh, I wouldn't recommend having a Defense Cape or Sign of Life or Sign of the Porter uh, at all. Since you can, or well, if you want to have one of these, just bring a Defense Cape in your inventory um, to equip when you want to use it because uh, you can use your sign to cheese a kill if things go south and you really don't want to waste it on phases one to four. I just, I would say it's definitely not worth it uh, because you could use it to get a much easier like cheese kill if you want or if things mess up and you want to use it, then you can on phase five. 
Amulet of Souls is way better than Reaper here. That 10% effectiveness on your protection prayers really makes a difference. So go for the Souls with the Ornament Kit, of course, um, which you should be able to afford. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty much expecting people to have done quite a bit of Telos before pushing here and have some money from all of the drops you tend to get from him. Ring of Death, highly recommended unless you want to spend bank on your many deaths that you will have. So that's... You know, definitely something you have to think about. Uh, you can, if you want to be YOLO or you don't care, you can use an Asylum Surgeon's Ring. That'll help you out a decent amount by saving you those Adren uh, from some of your thresholds in some pretty important situations on occasion. But it's honestly not worth it, in my opinion, for the amount of money a Ring of Death will save you in the long run. Uh, and then if you're at, like, extremely high in Rage, I've seen some people wear the Leviathan Ring even for a chance at reducing damage. Um, but I can't really comment on that at all. I don't really know how effective that really would be. But, you know, use it if you want. You're going to want to have a large rune pouch in your, uh, you know, ammo slot filled with uh, blood, water, and fire runes. Since you will be on Ancients for this, you pretty much need to be on Ancients. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it any other way. Uh, you know, using normals is maybe doable, but the utility and safety of Ancients is pretty much needed at uh, this point in the Telos Enrage levels. Um, you can use Runic or Maniacal for pushing. Uh, Manny's obviously going to be generally better and easier, but the damage you take starts to get really painful when he's hitting you like 4.5Ks through your prayer at like 2,000% Enrage, and it's only going to increase from there. Um, so obviously using Runic, you'll get hit less often, a lot less often, which is something you might not think about, and the hits will be less. So it does make it a lot easier in terms of your damage intake, but your damage output is also much lower, and your accuracy is very tough uh, with Runic, which is why you tend to bring a stat hammer when you're using Runic. Uh, but I'll talk more about that when I go over the different strategies that you can employ. But just know you can use either one of the auras, um, but it does change up the strategy quite a bit. So, like I said, I'll go over it when I talk about the fight, but you definitely want to use one of those two. Uh, and don't bother wasting your time off aura. There's really no point. Um, the pocket slot is actually the slot that's pretty wide open. You can use an Element Scrimshaw, Sarah Book, Arma Book, maybe Grimoire. I've never tried the Grimoire myself, but you could test it out if you'd like. Uh, I use the Element Scrimshaw, but really take your pick on whatever you feel like using or what you have available. Um, you actually really want a Limitless Sigil for doing this, as it can save your life in many situations. On Phases 1, 2, and 3, it can come in extremely useful, and even on Phase 4 if you don't have enough Adren for, say, uh, a Reflect or a Debilitate. So I definitely would say you want to have a Limitless Sigil. Uh, so if you've been putting off getting it, I definitely recommend picking one up. Lastly, of course, is your weapon. Uh, and you really want to have tier 92s for pushing just to get all the accuracy and damage you possibly can. Uh, though you can make do with T90s, I guess. But if you can get to this enrage, I'd recommend just camping sub 1k for orb sets until you can buy Stephasless Game Prisal Wand if you don't have them already at this point. Uh, because, I mean, if you can get here, I assume you can kill Telos at lower enrages and just farm some drops up to make the money. And, I mean, it wouldn't take you that too, too long to get uh, the money you need for those weapons, assuming you don't already have them. Uh, you'll want uh, an Imperium Core, too, of course, if you're going to be 4-ticking. Uh, but if you're not 4-ticking, you don't really need the Core, obviously. Um, and I'll go over the other gear that's in your inventory in the next section, but that's pretty much the setup. There's not too, too much room for flexibility, honestly, here, because you really do pretty much need the Acto, and that's a lot of the gear pieces. But like I said, for one of the toughest challenges, you really are going to need the best gear. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say for the gear. Now I'm going to go into the inventory setup, which can vary a bit based on your aura, and as you get higher in rage, there are some things you might want to add on that you wouldn't necessarily need at lower points. So the inventory setup will actually look pretty similar, in all honesty, to sub-1k kills, unless you're using runic, in which case you'll want to include a malevolent or acto terralith top and a superior Stadius' Warhammer, as well as a Berserk Blood Essence in your inventory. But I'll talk about that in uh, more the over fight overview section. Uh, but we'll start from the top left with Ring of Vigor, pretty self-explanatory, saves you a Dren on your ult, use it 
You'll want a planted feet switch, and you really do need it, I'd say, so you can sun at the start of the kill and not risk it running out before the first grip. And also you can sun on P2 right after the hold still and not risk it running out before the grip. Obviously you got your Merciless Kite Shield with Turtling 3. It's very important, and you really do need that Turtling 3 on there for the extra barricade length. I've got my dual wield switch, which again, you don't need the core if you're not four ticking, but you do need a wand, obviously, if you're using a staff. You can also bring a Calphite rebounder if you like for certain defenses, but I don't find it hugely useful, so I don't tend to bring it myself. Then we've got an overload replenishment weapon poison, pretty standard. Luck of the dwarves you honestly shouldn't bring since it rarely makes any difference in your chances at this enrage, so just ditch it for another food probably. Uh, Nips, of course, very useful to have. Enhanced Excal for some free heals, and G Staff for specs on P1, maybe two, and five. Then you've got your super stores, of which I bring three in my inventory and three in my mammoth. Though if you have salves, you can do with five. This may sometimes be too much, but if P1 or three go south, your prayer really gets fucked, so you sometimes need extra. Uh, then I bring five brews in my invent and five in the mammoth. You can increase the amount in the mammoth if you would like. Um, but I then fill the rest with whatever food I'm using. And then I've got the dummy to build a dren before going in and just grab another food in its place. Now, your food and brew choice is pretty important, obviously. Um, you know, you can probably uh, early on go with these standard sailfish and ceridoman brew flasks. But as you get higher up in Enrage, you may, if you are financially uh, able, want to switch to Super Sarah Brews and Sailfish Soups because although it isn't the hugest difference in individual healing, it does add up over the course of 10 brews with 300 extra HP per sip. That being six sips, you know, you can do the math. It is a quite big difference in healing and obviously being able to burst heal for more is very nice to do as well. So I would highly recommend that you consider switching to them if you find yourself struggling at any point because um, it actually makes a decent difference in uh, your ability to get kills. Lastly, uh, in the inventory that I, one thing I forgot to mention is the pack mammoth scrolls in there. You really do want to be using a pack mammoth for this, not only for the two extra inventory slots, but these scrolls are hugely useful and I mainly find them useful on P2 uh, just because there's a long amount of time in between the hold still and the grip so you tend to get hit quite a bit during that time and you need to eat but you sun right after the hold still so you need to build your adren back up for the grip and these mammoth scrolls basically allow you to eat a food out of your mammoth without wasting any of your adrenaline so you use the scroll and it'll eat one of your soups or one of your sailfish from within the mammoth give you the health and not use up any adrenaline for you. So it actually does help out quite a lot and I would highly recommend you bringing some of those scrolls along and using a mammoth for sure. But yeah, that's pretty much the gear setup. Uh, like I said, if you are using Runic, bring a melee top switch with an uh, uh, superior status as Warhammer and a Berserk Blood Essence in your inventory. And you want to pot up with a Supreme defense and supreme magic potion in the bank activate the berserker prayer before you head there although i'll talk about that a little bit more in the fight overview as well but that's pretty much just for getting the first grip before you're able to use your specs and lower his defense but either way that's pretty much it for the gear and inventory i mean it's probably stuff you already knew but i wanted to make sure this was complete uh, as a guide as i could um, but the phase one to five overview is not nearly going to be as long as my previous guide so yeah we are now going to jump into phase one basically what changes from the fight at below 1k and you know what you need to watch out for as your enrage gets higher um, obviously again i'm not going to be going over all the mechanics specifically just things you really need to consider and change uh in your i guess behavior uh that you might not be used to so like I said before, you want to build a Dren before coming to the fight so you can sun right away. So make sure you're full of Dren, building however you really want. If you're on Runic, pot up Supreme Magic and Defense in the bank. Bank the pots and turn on Berserker Curse to preserve your stats. Make sure you've also got your Melee Top and Hammer and your Blood Essence, but do not equip it. 
Before starting the fight, make sure at some point you fall out of combat so you can use the defensive thresholds without losing a Dren. Pot up, do your aura, scrim, all that, and then as you're running to Telos, use Devo to block the first few hits and Sun right away after that. I like to start with a nice blitz to break his freedom and also to play a nip right at the start. Uh, and make sure you have your vigor on and your planted feet for the sunshine. There's two ways you can approach P1. Uh, mainly only when on Manny, as you can't really get the damage out uh, when you're not using it for the fast strategy. But the safe way that I tend to do is just a Dren Pot and build to full, counting as autos, and charge up Detto on the 6th or 7th auto. If you want to YOLO though and pray for nip stun RNG, you can Adren pot into a Sphix and deep impact to stun spam him, but you may have to limitless if you can't get full Adren. Uh, either way though, you're going to want to charge detonate on 6th or 7th auto attack, release it with an auto attack wild magic, and immediately shield swap into reflect. Pray your attacks didn't splash and you'll eventually get out of the grip. If you want with the YOLO method, you can try phasing Telos before the hold still, uh, so you don't even get a second grip until P2, but I find it unreliable to do that, so I would recommend just going for regular DPS. Uh, avoid the Gillen or Uppercut, which will start to have the ability to one-hit KO you pretty soon, so you better be uh, good at it, and be sure to get in the green beam. Uh, I'll usually use a G staff spec in the beam, and if you're high enough where he has the possibility to kill you before the hold still, I'll probably throw in a debil as well just to make sure um, I can, you know, r reduce the damage. And uh, also make sure you have full adren for the next grip that is coming up, uh, utilizing the green beam as such. Res your hold still, and then sonic wave into Detto pretty much right away, straight into reflect after that, like before. And this one will usually hurt more since you aren't under sun, so be prepared to eat up. Um, but you should be able to then phase him right before or right after the second Gillenor, and you're on to phase two. Now that is the maniacal approach. If you are on runic, uh, what you want to do is same strategy at the very start, although never go for the fast strat on runic. It's not going to work out well for you. Just build to full off the start after sunning and charge up your detonate as usual. But uh, you want to make sure you put on your Berserk Blood Essence and activate it while, like, right as you're starting your detonate or while you're in your detonate and activate it so that you get the boosted stats because you did not overload or you should not have overloaded when you started the kill because you potted up your Supreme Magic and Supreme Defense pots. You then use your Blood Essence to boost your stats to massive levels and pretty much gives you a 100% hit chance. And you can release your Detonate with uh, Auto Wild Magic into Reflect. And it's usually honestly easier to break out with the Blood Essence Runic uh, method than it is even with Manny, just because of how accurate you are and you'll pretty much hit everything. You'll hit your Detonate, your Wild Magic, both hits, and your Auto Attack every time. Um, and it's really good. Unfortunately, Blood Essences don't work with Maniacal, so you can't do that, uh, which kind of sucks. But yeah, that's pretty much what you do there. And then uh, another thing changes as you're doing DPS waiting for the Gillenor. Uh, make sure you Gothic Staff at some point, get in the Green Beam after the Gillenor Uppercut, and then while you're in the Green Beam, you want to do your stat hammer spec. So you switch to your melee top, your hammer, and your melee turmoil boosting prayer whether that's the tier 95 or the tier 99 one and you go for your spec pray it doesn't splash if it doesn't or if it does splash i'll usually use anticipate and then go for another spec and uh that usually will hit and if it doesn't you pretty much just cry um and i don't know there's really not much you can do at that point but uh you gotta be careful because he is about to do the hold still, so make sure you res that, uh, and you, you gotta make sure you anticipate at some point, switching back to your proper prayer and your at your mage top and staff. It is pretty hectic doing your stat hammer spec on P1, takes some getting used to, and you need to have all that stuff on your bar most likely for easy access. Uh, so it is a bit hectic for sure, but it is something you will want to get used to. Um, oh, also, Make sure after you do the grip, you overload up uh, so that your hammer has a better chance of hitting um, because you won't be able to utilize the blood essence for the second rotation of the grip and it is uh, pretty much going to be required that you're going to probably have to brew at some point during that. So yeah, uh, when you're on runic, you're going to do the second grip the same way as on Maniacal, uh, hopefully having full Adren after standing in the green beam after doing your stat hammer spec and resing your hold still. 
do the Dedo Wild Magic Reflect strategy as usual, and then you uh, are most likely not going to be able to face him until after like a third grip rotation, just because the first rotation you're really not doing a whole lot of damage since you're spending a decent amount of Adren getting your specs off to lower his defense, and he'll likely be able to have healed a bit off of that second grip because you didn't have sun up. So for the next rotation, when the green beam spawns again, you want to get it into it and make sure you sunshine, um, and then get back to full Adren from the beam, and then you go for your Gillinor and your Hold Still, building a Dren the whole time. And you do your Detonate Wild Magic under Sun, and you should be able to phase him after that. So P1 tends to be a bit longer on Runic, but in general I find it a bit easier, to be honest. It, it kind of depends on how good you are at switching for your specs and just in general with the whole process of it. But that's pretty much the strategies. The main thing is you always need to have full Adren for the grip so you can get that reflect off if you don't have that full adren make sure you uh, you know that's where the limitless sigil comes in handy you can pop it to get your reflect off if you're just going to fall below 50 percent before you're able to get it off um but yeah i mean that's pretty much it it's not a huge change unless you're on runic where you have to do all those specs and stuff but for the most part uh p1 is honestly pretty easy to die on it's i'd say p2 is probably the easiest phase at the, uh, at 1k plus in rage um, and P1 and P3 are pretty similar, in my opinion, in terms of, you know, annoyingness or death possibility. But, yeah, that's pretty much all the changes for P1. P2 doesn't really have a whole lot, but I'm going to go over those uh, coming up now. Alright, so for the changes for P2, uh, you're pretty much always going to be dropping down to one of two specs, and that's going to be either the Mage Onslaught or the Hold Still. If you're dropping down and you're facing a grip coming up next, then I don't know what to tell you. I mean, just go for a sonic wave if you have to, limitless, and charge your detonate and do your wild magic into reflect and pray. You're going to be feeling the pain, though, if you have to drop down into a grip. But that's pretty much based basically if you mess up. You do not really want to face him into P2 after a hold still. Uh, you should be able to avoid that, but... Either way, if you drop down into the Mage Onslaught, uh, just make sure you block the beam if he does a lot of auto attacks before starting the Onslaught, but if not, if he just does like starts it right away or only does one auto attack, you don't really have to worry about the beam, um, and then you can pull him out of the beam there. Uh, but either way, after that, you pretty much want to try and build the full Adren before the hold still. And if you are at you know high enough in Rage, like probably 1400% plus, I'm not sure exactly when this starts being a viable strategy, but you can get a feel for it yourself. Um, you want to switch to your shield or your rebounder and use reflect before the hold still. And then uh, when you res the hold still, it'll deal back a 10k damage hit to Telos, which is actually pretty useful. Uh, so I'd recommend doing that if you have the uh, spare adren and you are at high enough in rage where it won't ruin your healing. Uh, and if you want to make sure that it doesn't ruin your healing, you can use Freedom, because Anticipate does have a 10% damage reduction that would be factored in. So I would say you could definitely use Freedom to avoid that and give you a bit of a better chance at not, at, you know, at healing to full. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty helpful to do. But once, you're, once you've raised your hold still, you want to sunshine with your planted feet on and start building a Dren. And this is the point where your Mammoth Scrolls may come in handy because you really don't have much, if any, leeway to eat any food uh, before the grip because you have to be pretty much building a Dren this whole time. And you also want to, of course, make sure you get in the beam for your virus because it can be pretty painful at these high end rages. But yeah, if you uh, start to get hit a lot, I would definitely recommend prioritizing using your Mammoth Scrolls, even over using Brews, because you don't want to brew your stats down for the grip, as that can mess you up a lot if you end up splashing. So the Mammoth Scrolls really, really do come in handy for Phase 2 here, and I would highly recommend using them. But other than that, I mean, nothing else really changes a whole lot. Uh, the Mage Onslaught is extremely dangerous, and most of the time, uh, unless you're purposely trying to avoid him being in the beam, he'll have full uh, Adren Bar for the Mage Onslaught, and you can actually use it to your advantage, to be honest. Usually I'll go for a Debilitate Reflect, if if my Reflect comes back up with like an Acto Reset. It t doesn't tend to happen, so usually just go for a Debilitate, and then if I need to, I'll Apot and 
make sure I'm full of Dren, uh, and then I'll use Cade there, and you can turn on Soul Split, get some heals up. And depending on how high as the Dren bar is, like if you want, you can purposely prolong the Mage Onslaught so you can get more damage in, because you want to make sure you can phase him before he does another Gillenor Uppercut, uh, just to give you the optimal rotation on P3. But uh, once the Cade is about to run out, you should have been able to get up to 50% of Dren during the Cade time, and you can Devo at that point, and... A combination of Debil at the start for a couple hits into Cade into Devo should easily be able to deplete his entire bar. If not, you're pretty much going to die. I mean, you can res a hit and get full health from it, but you can very, very easily get one hit through your prayer and through a reflect, to be honest, um, at this point, because the more hits he does, the more damage each hit will do, and you'll pretty much die if you uh, let yourself get hit by any of the hits following Cade. Um, but yeah, it is definitely useful if his Adren bar is pretty low, but his health is like at like three 370k or so. You can just let his bar go up, like don't get in the beam and let it go up and use your do your normal rotation of Cading. And it doesn't really increase that much, if at all, uh, the bar itself while he's doing the attacks. It just kind of goes up and then he uses an attack so it puts it down a little and it doesn't ever really gain too much so usually once you Devo you can then just hop in and then it'll go down and be you'd be done with it. Uh, you can do another Reflect on the next Hold Still as well if you want to get that 10k damage in. Um, just make sure you're full Adren and preferably full health for going into P3 and um, you want to definitely try and do it before the Gillenor if you can. If you can't, don't wait for a grip, just phase him. Uh, you know, going in on the Gillenor isn't the worst thing in the world, it's just better if you don't do it. But like I said, P2 is probably the easiest phase, really not too tough if you do it right and just make sure you sun after the first hold still and utilize that sun for your grip, making sure to use Mammoth Scrolls to avoid brewing down your stats and to keep your adren up. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I can think of for P2. I mean, like I said in this uh, in the beginning of this video, I'm probably just going to be showing clips of things that are of the phases and stuff that I'm talking about. I don't really think I need to go into any ability by ability rotations or anything like that for this guide until we get to like phase 5. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. We're going to go into phase 3 now, which honestly doesn't really change too much at all uh, for 1k+, plus, unless you are at like really, really high in rage and you can't use Onslaught. So yeah, I'll see you guys for P3. So for the changes on P2 when you are using Runic, um, I'd actually say Runic makes P2 a decent bit harder just because of the fact that you are going to maybe have a tough time managing your adrenaline depending on when you start the phase up and just depending on if your spec splashes or not. So anyways, uh, hopefully, ideally, you really want to phase Telos into phase 2 when you're about to get the Mage Onslaught, so before the Gillenor on phase 1, um, because then you'll have plenty of time to build adrenaline stuff. And then if that's the case, right at the start of the phase, you pretty much want to st switch to your stat hammer spec and then start building a Dren and then just sun after the hold still and build to full and you're pretty much fine from there. He'll be, you know, still hit with the stat hammer for the grip. But uh, if you are coming down and it's going to be a hold still, usually I will just wait for the hold still and then spec after the hold still and then usually I'll try to adren pot and then sun and if I don't have my adren pot up I'll have to build and then sun and then hopefully I can adren pot before the grip if not you'll have to sigil and that's pretty much the rotation you do and then since you're gonna pretty much want to phase him after the next mage onslaught at some point before you phase him into p3 you're gonna want to do another stat hammer spec and a g staff spec uh, and you can do that at any time before the hold still after the hold still right before the virus it's anywhere in there before you phase him into p3 
and that will give you the debuffs on P3 as well, which you are going to need because your onslaught isn't going to hit as much, so you'll need to do a decent amount of damage with your just regular abilities once you're on P3. So yeah, you definitely want to use those specs, but that's pretty much the only changes. It is a bit harder with managing your adrenaline on this phase because of the fact that you need to use those specs, but uh, you definitely need to use them so that you can not splash a ton on the grip. So just go ahead and do that, and um, if you are struggling with it, maybe you want to try and stall him out on the Mage Onslaught a little bit longer if he is going in on the mage onslaught, but if he's going in on the hold still, it's going to be tough either way, and you just have to be prepared to use your sigil if required. But either way, we're going to go on to P3 now. All right, so for P3, um, I actually have quite a bit of good tips for P3 on my original Telos guide, so you can check that out if you want more details on what I might talk about here. But there's a couple different approaches. I mean, I see a lot of times people who are doing high and rage health skills just stand in the middle and get in the beam when it spawns, and I don't understand how they do that <laughs> without like getting nuked quite often because of the way his movement works. So I get into the corner where he can't get hit by the beams, and then pretty much just uh, I'll do like a wild magic and a uh, combust to run him over there, and then just get in the beam and onslaught like usual, pretty much. Um, you will tend to get hit much more often while you're obviously at higher in rages, but I still pretty much had no problem doing onslaughts all the way up to 2k. Um, but if you want, you can do a sun rotation and limitless and do some threshes, and it's not too, too bad, although it is probably going to be quite a lot worse than onslaught if you're not four ticking. Um, but you can do that, and uh, it's definitely a viable option but I would obviously recommend doing Onslaught if you can. Uh, and you want to get pretty much 9 hits out of your Onslaught watching your buff bar. Uh, if you can't get up to 9 hits consistently, or at least most of the time, um, then you're going to want to start sunning at that point whenever you get to that point. Um, and it's pretty much like you want to get them under 200k HP with your Onslaught if possible. So. That's pretty much the uh, the whole long and short of it. I mean, if things go bad, you got to be killing those golems. Uh, and a thing that you really want to do, like you at this point, you should probably have like a sense for when the beam is gonna switch, like a bit of a sense of the timing on it at the very least. So when you know the beam is gonna switch, run into any of the four corners of the room if you want and then the beam will never switch onto Telos and you can get into it or get him away from it, whatever it may be. Like if you need to clear your virus, then you obviously need to get into it, but you can do whatever you need to do at that point. But that is definitely a thing to keep in mind. Like develop that sense for when the beam is gonna switch and jump into the corner when it is about to do that. But other than that, I mean, it's just the same as sub 1K. Keep that bar to the left as much as possible and don't get nuked, but that's pretty much it. I mean, there's honestly not too much that changes uh, on this phase. And uh, yeah, we're going to head on now to phase four, where there's a pretty big change that might mess you up a little bit if you're not prepared for it going into 1k plus kills. All right, so I figured I'd put this clip in here just because I wanted to make sure that I covered everything. But on P3, there isn't really any difference when you're using runic because you spec'd in P2, so you don't ever have to spec while you're on P3. But it definitely is important to note your adrenaline at all times, and if you get to 25% adrenaline, you should really just switch to your G-Staff and use a G-Staff spec because it's very rare and really honestly will never happen that you will get enough adren to use a threshold because he drains your adren so much at this enrage. Um, but since the P3s tend to be longer, just make sure you're killing the golems off, pulling Telos into the corner when the beam's about to switch, and just being as careful as possible because any nuke is pretty much instant death at this point. So yeah, uh, really no big differences, honestly, and the same co goes for P4. So I'll actually not make a different clip for P4, just live, leave this disclaimer here. On P4, when you're on Runic, nothing really changes at all. Just be aware you can splash a bit more often and try to use a G-Staff spec in between fonts if you have the Adren, just to increase your hit chance a little bit when you're trying to phase them into the fonts at the appropriate times. 
Other than that, the last time I'll talk about Runic will be for P5 because there is a bit of a difference that you definitely need to be aware of when you're on that phase with Runic. Um, but yeah, overall the fight isn't too hugely different. It's just you got to be aware of when to spec and potentially be prepared to deal with losing a lot of your Dren because of the specs if they splash or anything like that. Alright, so phase 4 is when the first big change comes from 1000% plus in Rage, and that's the Rock Falls. It's pretty much the exact same mechanic as phase 5's Rock Fall below 1k, uh, it just happens on phase 4. And a single rock will fall every so often, and when it does, it will always spawn such that it will hit you. So you've got to move whenever it falls, uh, unless you're already like in the process of moving. Now this is obviously a problem since you've got to charge up and stand on the fonts, but it's pretty easy to avoid once you get used to it. Uh, the anima bomb is also pretty dangerous at these higher end rages, and at a certain point, uh, a single defensive won't be enough to block it, so you'll need to use at least two of Reflect, Debilitate, and Shield Dome to block it. And if you're on Manny and you're up at like 4k in Rage at this point, um, I think you need all three, otherwise you still won't be able to block it with just two. For the first font though, uh, it's pretty feasible to start the phase with any of the specs really, depending on how P3 went. So uh, generally if I have Anima Bomb first, I'll just block it with the two defensives, um, Adren Potting if I need to, since P3 usually will leave you with very little adrenaline, um, and then phase him into the font after the hold still heal, uh, and I will Cade the first font as well. Uh, if I have the Hold Still or the Gillinor first, I will phase him in as he fires the Anima Bomb and Cade the Bomb, carrying that into the font. So that's usually pretty useful as long as you have that one of those other two specs first, so you can get the damage in before he uses the Anima Bomb. Just remember that it's 112.5k HP to phase him in, and avoid doing so when he's about to use the Anima Bomb or Hold Still, because then he'll use it right after the insta-kill, and you'll probably be screwed. You generally, um, you should generally not have issues avoiding the rocks in between charging the fonts, I hope. So just like move a bit when they come. Um, but when you're on the font charging it, you want to make sure you're standing on like pretty much the very edge of where you can charge it from. Such that if a rock comes, you can just like run across the font and still be safe while charging it. You also want to try to trap the volcanic so it's not hitting you, or you can just ice barrage and run away from it, which is really useful on this phase for that sort of thing. Uh, and then just reducing the golem damage in general with ice barrage is pretty useful as well. If you are freezing them and running away, it's really nice to soul split and blood barrage 4 tick with your shield on to really reduce the need for food here, because you can pretty much fully restore any damage you take from the font itself using that method. This will also make your life a lot easier on P5 if you learn how to do the 4 ticking with shield on. Even if you don't 4 tick regularly, it's a lot easier to just 4 tick with your shield on because you, you just 4 tick with every ability and you don't switch uh, weapons at all. Uh, you can even do this on the non cade fonts by making use of Ice Barrage and standing away from the golems. Once the font is charged up though, you really want to get off of it and run away, being sure to anticipate if the volcanic is up and still on you and not frozen away. Um, and then only run back to the font a second or two after the message uh, Telos is about to fire the anima bomb shows up. You can run back a little earlier if a rock falls since you know it won't happen again before the insta-kill comes, but you basically want to do like a drive-by on the font almost, like running onto it only to block the insta-kill and then running back to Telos quickly so he doesn't hit you with any mage hits, uh, if you can avoid that. It definitely takes some getting used to having rocks fall in this phase, but other than that, it's really not too different from sub 1k. You'll need to get used to the golems living between fonts though, since they start to have very high health and it's not really realistic to uh, kill them all most of the time. Just try to focus down the volcanic as soon as possible, and then after the volcanics are dead, you want to go for the corrupt golems, since you can end up with a lot of stacks if you don't kill them, or at least freeze them and avoid their hits. Be sure to phase into the second font during the Gillinor spec, and re reflect revenge to deal with that font. Do the same thing, charge it up, run off it, anticipating if necessary, and running back only when the insta-kill is about to come, and you should be fine. Telos will often be standing far away at this font, so be ready to flick on Mage Prey. 
uh, and then Cade your so much power as he uses it and carry your Cade over for the anima bomb uh, as long as you did phase him into the font during the Gilinor like you should do. I usually try to phase him into the final font after the hold still here uh, surging over to it and doing Reflect Revenge again. This means I don't have to worry about defensives coming out of this font since Gilinor is next, but if he gets the Gilinor off uh, and you can't phase him right after the hold still, I would say you don't want to Reflect here since it likely won't be up for the Anima Bomb and you may splash your Debilitate and really need it. Same scenario on this font though with Charging, Running Off, etc. Uh, this font can be a bit dangerous since he can get another so much power if you stand off it too long, so be careful if you're avoiding rocks uh, while you're charging it up. Hopefully you don't have any Volcanics alive after this last font, and if so, just focus on Telos and ignore the remainder of the golems. You can also run away and freeze them to avoid issues here. Using the, You can also use the middle pool to line them up so you only have to freeze the one in front. And then make sure to switch to Blood Barrage for the start of Phase 5 run away from Telos and switch to your mage prayer eat up to full or like wait for a res have full prayer, adren, everything like that and then just finish off the rest of his HP to move on to P5 where the real fun will begin okay so time for phase 5 if you don't already know the changes to phase 5 at 1k plus in rage are the rock fall mechanic is expanded dropping up to five rocks at once the instant kill attack can no longer be blocked by immortality meaning you need to font the minions and your prayer will be more quickly drained by the green beam so keep an eye on it as getting smited means pretty much certain death one of the most important things you need to know here is how to line the minions up properly on the fonts themselves. They need to be in a square so you can AoE them all appropriately to charge the font up. There are some general spots to stand on, but it's really something you want to get a feel for yourself. I recommend going in at 100% in rage or so and just sitting there tanking, not doing damage, and take the golems to their respective fonts and seeing how they line up. The volcanic font is a bit weird, and if you're coming from the north of Telos, you'll have to stand f kind of far south of the font to line them up. The clips I play will show the spots I go to, but again, I really highly recommend just going in at low and ridge and testing yourself just to get a feel for it. Another thing you'll need to get used to that you may not be is praying melee a lot on this phase. There's only one big Telos hitting you, and there can be up to six little golems hitting you, which at like 2000% in rage can deal just 6k hits as a base hit if you're not praying melee. So, pretty tough. Uh, and then the pure golems can easily one hit kill you once they've been alive for a bit. So, it is pretty scary. That being said, Telos himself can pop you 9k's or one hit you no problem if your prayer is off and you don't have any defensives up. So, you will need to have uh, some sort of defensives up when praying melee, uh, or you better be perfect with those prayer flicks, which I don't recommend. Anyway, uh, to start the phase off, just spam click where Telos is going to spawn so you can target him right away and use something like like a basic like D breath. Uh, and then you're going to want to shield switch right away and debilitate while the golems are spawning and start running to the green beam wherever it's spawned, reflecting on your way there and switching to praying melee. Another great thing about praying melee is Telos will hit you a bit harder with his mage attacks and since you're using reflect, that damage will go, go back to him a little bit and help you get more damage in. You want to get in the green beam two or three squares away so the golems line up appropriately. And if you've got volcanics, anticipate as well here. If not, just skip that in natural instinct. Use revenge after that. Uh, and make sure you nip uh, around now. So always be using your nip when possible on Telos. If you're at 1500% plus in rage, you want to target the middle golem during your natural instinct revenge and stuff. So you can start to auto attack them with your barrage spells. If not, stay on Telos and Sun after Revenge, then use Wild Magic on Telos, but if you're at higher in Rage, you want to corrupt the Golem instead of the Wild Magic here, uh, and then Cade as the rocks are about to land. Then you want to get on the middle Golem if you weren't already, and start charging up your Detonate, and this again depends on your Rage, uh, what uh, ability you want to release it with. At lower in Rages, you want to release it with Dragon Breath, I would say anything below like 1400% if you're on Maniacal, if you use Tsunami you do risk killing the Golems, so I would use D-Breath up to that point and then also follow that up with a Corruption. 
but that's just my opinion you can kind of just get a feel for it yourself like once you feel you're not worried about killing them with tsunami you can start using that one important thing is when you release this detonate you want to make sure you release it with an ice barrage because that'll freeze the golems in place and it's actually pretty useful if you have volcanics you can use this time to step back away from them so you don't have a chance of getting stunned but you're still in the beam and at this point I would recommend using immortality if you as long as you have a little bit of time left on your Cade which you should at this point you should be able to get your immortality in and after that go clear your virus as soon as possible if you uh, didn't get the green virus and then the golems shouldn't follow you immediately because you ice barrage them so get back on Telos with some basics or wild magic if you're high adren and make sure you switch back to blood barrage at this point if you didn't get your immortality off you can do those thresholds with your staff but if you did get it off make sure you keep your shield on anyways uh, you can also use resonance at this point to get full HP if you're low but and flick your prayer off for it and then prep afterwards to get it back off cooldown quicker once the golems start to come though head to their font debilitating telos on the way with your shield on and then reflect and switch to melee prey once you're at the font and make sure you line the golems up in a box as well the rocks should have fallen again before you got all the way to the to the font, like usually while you're on your way there, they'll fall again. Um, if you have volcanics, make sure you anticipate after reflect. Now you want to target the middle golem and four tick blood barrage with basics and shield on, prioritizing corruption, uh, D breath, and chain. Once your reflect is about to wear off, you can devo and get a rezo from one of Telos's mage attacks. And during the devo and resonance, use ice barrage to freeze the golems. You may have to ice barrage earlier if rocks come, but either way, once they are frozen, surge away or run away and pray mage. If you're at high in rage and the golems still have a decent amount of health, charge up a detonate now, releasing it with an auto attack to clear the golems. And finish off any stragglers with wild magic or basics. Careful not to detonate on a golem with like 1k health because if your aftershock goes off or your poison or your crackling, uh, it could kill it, meaning your detonate won't work and that could screw you over. If the golems get unfrozen before you kill them or before Telos charges his insta kill attack, it can be very scary, especially if it's pure golem since you can easily get one banged. So it's really important to have a feeling for the timing of when your barrage is about to wear off. And then you can either refreeze them right away or surge away and just run until Telos starts charging his insta kill attack so you can pray melee. If you do a if you do it properly though, the golems should either be dead or Telos will be charging the attack and you can pray melee before they unfreeze. Clicking the font to stop the insta-kill is one of the most clunky and buggy things you'll ever have to do, so be aware of these few uh, quirks. If you click on the font when it's not charged up, your character won't run over to it. It will just display the charge percentage, so be sure to click to walk if you need to get near it before actually activating it. If you're spam clicking on the font trying to kill the fourth golem to finish the charge while he's charging his insta kill and you're kind of panicking, it can sometimes cancel your damage from your abilities. It makes no sense at all, but if you wild magic then spam click on the font, maybe only one wild magic hit will register. So be careful for that um, and try not to spam click on the font if you can avoid it. Lastly, if rocks start to fall all around the font right when you're going to block the insta-kill, your character will kind of do random spins on the spot when you click it, meaning you can't really know where your surge or escape will take you, and that'll often result in a death. Uh, bladed Dive would probably be useful here if you can stand to use it with the extra keybinds. It's something I haven't integrated yet into my keybinds, but I really should do. Either way, there will sometimes be extra golems left over, so make sure to kill them as soon as possible while running back to the front of Telos and building a Dren, switching back to Blood Barrage if you need to do another font rotation. If you're at a point where you feel comfortable YOLOing it, then leave on Ice Barrage. For me, I'll go for the YOLO if it's at like 70 or 80k health if I don't have Natural Instinct up, and if I do have Natural Instinct up, I'll do it at 100 to 110k. But that's something you really need to decide for yourself, how much damage you feel comfortable outputting. Telos will also do two auto attacks before spawning more golems, so you can get a rezo here if it's off cooldown and if you need it. For subsequent rotations, if you got an acto reset, you can pretty much do the same thing as the first rotation, though the rock falls may come at different times and trip you up. Uh, regardless though, you want to debilitate and reflect when the golems spawn and pray melee, running to the beam, and I usually use revenge on the way there as well. 
Once you're in the beam, do your normal rotation if possible. If not, sun right away. Either way, you want to make sure to freeze the golems as soon as possible when they're in their line, box lineup so that if the rocks come, you can run back in the beam or out of it entirely to avoid the rocks while not ruining your lineup. This is extremely important to do on subsequent rotations after the first, so really try to remember to freeze those golems while you're doing all your defensives. Either way, you're going to want to Cade when the virus is about to come and do your detonate uh, plus D breath or tsunami uh, again in rage dependent on the golems adren potting if you need to uh, if you didn't have natural instinct up and then go clear your virus then it's the same thing as the first font really run to your font debilitate on the way there and use blood uh, switch to blood barrage reflect and melee prayer and clear the golems like before this can essentially repeat forever as long as you're getting rezos and not eating too much but your prayer is going to get drained pretty quick here you should hopefully be able to consistently go for the YOLO after two fonts max, but sometimes if you're good enough, you can just go for it after one font. Once you're prepared to go for the YOLO, make sure Ice Barrage is on, and if the beam switch before he spawns golems, go to the opposite side of the green beam and then head there after he spawns the golems. You can debilitate, reflect, melee prayer like normal, and you can also freeze the front golem on your way there to avoid them even coming up to you and hitting you. Once you're in the beam, use Natural Instinct if available, Revenge, Sun, Wild Magic, and Cade when the rocks come. If the rocks come earlier, Cade if it's up, but if not, just avoid them and don't worry about ruining your Golem lineup since you shouldn't have a lineup at this point. After Cade, use Asphyx, Omni Power, Basics, uh, Tsunami on Telos, and clear your virus. Then you want to freeze the front golem so they stop chasing you and put staff on, heading to the green or red beam if they are accessible uh, after the beam switch. But don't go too far ahead of the frozen golems as then the back ones will come around the other side, which can cause problems. Uh, you want a wild magic, a sphix, deep impact, nip when possible, G staff spec if high adren or you're in the green beam. And once reflect is up, use that again and switch to melee prayer and get a resonance. The reflected damage on Telos will be massive here as he'll likely hit you 3 or 4k and cause just as much damage to himself. Uh, you can also use Reprisal here if you have it and have enough Adren. Be sure to keep running and refreezing golems once they break free and after Reflect he should usually be dead uh, around this point. Switching to Staff and Thresh if you need to continue to try and finish him off. And if he does try to start charging his insta kill and he's like 30k health or whatever just switch to your defense cape and use your sign to cheese the rest of the kill if you don't have it you're dead if he's at like 8k or below you can sometimes get it while he starts the insta kill if you staff a slisk spec and like use bleeds and then threshold but it usually won't work uh, but sometimes you will get lucky other than that uh, he should be dead and congrats you did it the final short little thing I wanted to cover before I end this video is when you want to spec uh, with your stat hammer when you're on runic uh, on phase 5 and it's pretty much you just want to do it in between fonts for the most part. You basically just want to, once you block the insta kill with your uh, respective font, uh, hopefully all the golems will be dead at this point or either at least low health because you don't really want to have to spend time killing them. Uh, and then right once you've blocked it, you run up to Telos, and hopefully the green beam is nearby, so you can jump in that as well if you need a Dren, but if it's not, you should have enough, uh, at least 35% of Dren to spec, and you can also a Dren pot. Um, but while he's, you know, lying down or whatever in between the uh, insta-kill, just switch to your stat hammer and use your spec during that time. Uh, if you have enough Adren, or if the green beam is nearby, you can also G staff spec during this time to make it so you hit chances even better but that's pretty much it you just want to spec in between the fonts like that um, and you don't really need to do it in between every font uh, you only really need to do it once you have decided that you're gonna go for the YOLO kill and you definitely need to do it at that point but if you know that even with a spec you wouldn't be able to finish him off you don't really need to do it because you're not going to be on Telos too much during that time, but it would be, you know, ideal if you did, just so your Detonate and Tsunami have a better chance of dealing some residual damage onto Telos, but yeah. You also may want to modify your decision-making of when to go for the YOLO 
when you're on runic obviously you're not going to be dealing as much damage even with the specs because you know many just gives you a higher damage output overall so just be aware of that maybe lower your yolo uh, amounts from like down to like 60 or 70k with no uh, natural instinct and if you do have natural instinct maybe like 80 or 90k you'll just have to feel it out for yourself but it's not too massively different different honestly um, on phase 5 with when you're on runic and it's actually pretty nice because you'll definitely notice that you'll take way less damage from the golems during your font times but that is pretty much it for this telos guide you guys I hope you all enjoyed it sorry it took longer than I expected to come out uh, it was a bit more work than I was anticipating and I was also uh, learning how to use this new editing program that I've never used for like an actual edited video before um, but I really like it a lot. It's way better than the one I was using before. Um, so thanks for your patience. Please let me know in the comments if there's anything that I may have missed. Uh, I tried to cover most of the basic things that you really need to know for doing the 1k plus kills. Uh, I recently got Silver Warden myself and that's why I decided it was time to make this guide. But obviously once you get up to like ridiculously high in rages some of these things might change or there might be some new things that you need to consider but by that point i'm sure you probably have the experience for yourself to know what to do um but either way i hope this helps some of you guys out if you're looking to push and rage at telos i find it really fun and it's definitely one of the if not the hardest challenge within the game at the moment uh, aside from the sm small small uh, team kills at bosses that aren't meant for small teams but either way i hope we all did enjoy this video i hope it helped you out um and i'll see you guys for uh, my next video probably my next guide that i'll make and this is not saying it's going to happen anytime soon like at all but the next guide that i will probably make will either be one for like arax or speed kills or for solok duos um or maybe Virago duos, I'm not sure. You guys can let me know in the comments what you would like to see. Uh, but as far as Telos goes, I think I'm pretty much done with making videos for this boss. I might make an add-on to my sub 1k guide just showing uh, a bit of a better strategy that I use nowadays. But uh, we'll have to see on that. Either way though, thanks for watching you guys. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Peace out.